Hey guys, hello everyone and welcome to the channel and welcome to the second part of Gate Smart Question series. And I'm really happy that you guys have showed such a response to the previous video and you like the concept and yeah, I'm really thankful for that. And that's why I'm continuing this particular series. This is the second part of it. And today in this video, we are going to take a question from quantum chemistry and basically from the operators and commutation. Now, this concept is something which everybody studies when they are going to start their quantum chemistry uh, chapter. This is something which everybody does, but the question which we are going to discuss tonight is a little bit different from the usual type of question which we get from operators and commutations, right? Now, before going into the question, as in the previous video we have done, uh, we, I have given you a homework and I said that I will discuss that in the next part. So, yes, let's discuss that. The question was that find the ground state term for the cobalt ion in coh 6 plus 3. This is a complex which are given with. So here cobalt is in plus 3 oxidation state. All right. Plus 3 oxidation state that means it's a D6 system. And to those who don't know about it, cobalt in plus 3 oxidation state with oxygen and nitrogen donor ligands always behave as a or always forms a low spin complex. So this is going to form a low spin complex considering that low spin and octahedral geometry if you fill these six electrons this is how they are going to get filled i have told you the uh, the l values for these so it was like plus two plus one zero minus one and minus two and if you count this so total your l value comes out to be like four plus two that is six and for six we have ground state term as i and since we don't have any unpaired electron so that's why uh, your spin multiplicity, multiplicity is going to come one the correct answer is 1i many of you many of you have answered it correctly and uh, like that's great that you have understood the concept and those who were not able to answer it now you got how to be done how this is to be done many many people get confused that whether it will be low spin or high spin so that thing should be very clear to you that in cobalt with plus 3 oxidation state with any nitrogen or oxygen donor ligand nitrogen donor ligand can be like nh3 or edta or any any ligand which is nitrogen donor oxygen donor like water is there then you have like uh, uh, oxalate all these ligands with all these ligands uh, this cobalt in plus 3 state behaves as a low spin complex all right so that's why it is going to be filled like this and this is going to be the correct answer i hope you understood now let's take the question which we are going to discuss tonight so here's the question it says that if alpha uh, sx sy minus sy sx alpha is equals to i h cross square a where sx and sy are spin angular momentum operators and alpha this is the basically the ket vector is spin up eigen function then the value of a is now those who are very beginner in this they those who don't know about this at all this notation is called as dirac notation and i have made a video on this okay so a video on dirac notation is already there and you can click on the i button and you can watch that particular video in case if you want to understand it's super super simple concept that's the only thing is that it looks little scary so that people just get scared about it but it's very simple okay coming back to this so there are two three informations which we have in the question first of all the, we are given with that this sx and sy are spin angular momentum along x-axis and along y-axis alpha is basically a cat vector and it's a spin up eigen function they are asking the value of this a all right now before going into that before explaining it let me tell you a few information about this so in quantum mechanics we have two types of spin like basically fermi ions like fermi ions those particle which follow fermi uh, direct statistics don't worry about the terms these uh, sounds very scary but these are very simple things basically i'm talking about electrons okay so they have uh, like two spins they can either have plus half a spin or they can have minus half a spin now we all know that and we have been doing this in organic and inorganic chemistry but in quantum chemistry they are written in the terms of operators and all so we are given with two operators there is there is a two operator system or uh, like we have two eigen functions not operators actually these are eigen functions these are called as alpha and we have beta okay so these are two eigen functions okay these are two eigen functions and they are eigen functions of only sz operator okay sz is the operator this is a spin angular momentum along z axis and it is also eigen function of s square operator okay so these are the two operators for this for which this is uh, eigen function now i guess you already know about eigen function and eigen values so that i'm not going to explain but yeah i'll explain you about sx sy and sz okay uh, now this alpha 
and beta they are not they are not eigen function they are not eigen function of of sx and sy now uh, let me explain that what this sx sy and sz are so i guess you all have studied about uh, angular momentum operator lx ly and lz they are also known as ladder operators similar to that whatever property you have studied for lx ly and lz same properties are going to be followed by sx sy and sz these are nothing but spin angular momentum operators these are just angular momentum operators these are what these are angular momentum operators and these are spin angular momentum spin angular momentum operators okay now whatever you are going to uh, like whatever uh, values you are going to get with these angular momentum operators same values or same thing are going to be followed by spin angular momentum operators so i guess you have already studied about this part that if you take commutation of two angular momentum operator let's say lx and ly so the value of them is equals to ih cross lz right i guess this everybody of you knows if i change the value if i make it like uh, uh, ly and lz then the value will be ih cross lx similarly if i take l uh, l z and l x then the value will be ih cross ly now if i change the order if i change the order and if i make it instead of lx ly if i write down it as ly lx then the value will be same just the sign will be changed it will be minus ih cross lz and same goes for others also if i make it lz ly this will become minus ih cross lx if i change this lx lz this will become minus ih cross ly okay so that's what this is now as i said that similar trend or similar thing is going to be followed for spin angular momentum operators as well so that means if i do sx sy what should i get i should get ih cross s okay now this is something which we are going to use to solve this particular question all right now as i said that alpha and beta are eigen values of sz and s square so of course uh, sorry these are eigen functions of sz and s square so they they will be having some eigen values as well right so if we have eigen functions we will be having eigen values so let me tell you about that also so as i said that uh, alpha and beta are eigen functions of uh, s z and s square so of course they will be having eigen values so what are those okay so if you operate s z on alpha okay this is how you operate a operator on the ket vector so what you are going to get is half h cross alpha and uh, when you are going to operate uh, s z on beta in that case we will get minus half h cross beta uh, so what are the eigen values here so basically eigen value for this is plus half h cross and for this eigen value is minus half h cross so basically if you see this is nothing but plus half a spin and this is minus half a spin that's why this this whole thing uh, or or basically alpha is also known as uh, up spin up spin eigen function alpha okay alpha is known as up spin eigen function and beta is known as down spin eigen function okay so this is already given to you in the question if you look upon the question if you see it it all it already says that alpha is a spin up uh, or up spin or spin up eigen function and that's how beta will be spin down or down spin eigen function all right now what they have given you is a particular equation and they are asking you to tell the value of a okay up to two decimal places or round off to one decimal place so let's write down this equation and try it okay so now if you see this is the value or this is the equation which they have actually given to you if you see the center part of it this much so it is nothing but it's like 
uh, two operators like if you have a b two operator and it's like a b minus b a you all know that this is nothing but a value of commutation of a b right so you can write down it as commutation of a and b similarly we can do over here in the place of a we have sx in the place of b we have sy so what i can write down the same thing is commutation of sx and sy right this is what i have done now since i have already told you that commutation of sx and sy will follow the same trend as the lx and ly were uh, following so the value of this is going to become uh, i h cross s z right and we will keep the rest of the things as it is now i and h cross are basically they are not operators so you can take it outside of this bracket so it will become i h cross alpha s z alpha now this says that you have to operate this s z on this alpha as a alpha as the operator uh, alpha is the eigen function so we know that when we operate s z on alpha we get half h cross alpha right so what we are going to get uh, i'll do it here so the value which i have that is i h cross alpha s z alpha so in the place of this much i can write down from here that is it will become i h cross this is alpha the value of this will become half h cross alpha now again this half h cross will be taken outside and it will become half i h cross square and i will be having alpha now since this is a equation or this is the condition for normality uh, and alpha is a spin up eigen function which is a normalized eigen function so the value of this much thing will be equal to 1 so what we are going to get we are going to get this whole thing equal to uh, half i h cross square right so this is what we have got so the value of this whole thing on solving we have got half i h cross square now what you have to do is you have to compare it with the value which is given to us just you have to compare these two things on comparing what you are going to get see this is also i h cross square this is also i h cross square here you have a, a here you have 1 by 2 so basically what we can say is a is equals to half or in decimal you have to write down so that is 0 0.5 so that is going to be the correct answer 0 0.5 is the correct answer for this so how did we solve this question we have we have done two con like we have uh, used two concepts one was the concept of uh, commutation which is used in order to convert this thing in the form of commutation and then uh, that's how we do it and second thing is the uh, the condition or the concept of operators we should know how these uh, uh, spin up or basically these spin operators spin angular momentum operators work and that's how we have solved this up and this is what value we have got so i guess you have understood how to do this question it was pretty simple actually so the thing that uh, these operators these uh, sx and sy operators are not, not not explained as such or they are not being taught as such in the classes that's why this question was a little bit a smart question from gate and they have not like this is nothing like something out of the box it's the same concept which you have studied for the angular momentum but the, just asked in the term of spin angular momentum so the correct answer is 0 0.5 for this particular question i hope you got it now the time is for the homework for this particular video so here i have tried to twist the question a little bit this is the homework question for this particular video it says that if beta okay now beta is our uh, like function eigen function over here so if beta sy sx minus sx xy uh, beta is equals to i h cross beta now be very careful with what i am writing i have not copied and pasted everything from the previous question i have changed things a little bit okay you have to be smart enough to understand that what changes have been made and how the answer will come up okay so where beta uh, ket vector is the uh, spin down eigen function then the value of b is you have to find out the value of b here in the same way just how we did for the value of a you have to do for the value of b but make sure that the things over here have, are changed i'm giving a hint over here okay be very careful what is being changed and use the logic use the concept which we have discussed in the video itself you can re-watch the video if you have missed something and then try to solve it i will be looking for your comments i will be looking for your answers in the comments down right so that's it for this video thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next one till then have a great day bye bye take care hey guys so i teach live on an academy plus platform here I teach for the CSIR UGC net category 
and you can follow me over here for regular classes you can access my free classes as well as my paid classes on this particular platform the classes which are free you can get that under the section of special classes whereas in order to access my paid classes paid live classes we have to take an academy plus subscription so do make sure that you take the an academy plus subscription to access all my paid classes which are quite organized the whole syllabus is being completed over there and the classes are quite regular over there so make sure that you take an academy plus subscription by using my referral code that is n underscore huda that's it for this thank you so much